Could 343 be leaving the 10 year plan? What kind of weapons should return in Halo Infinite? Well, I answer that and a lot more with my good buddy right here, BBK Dragoon. I answer your questions, guys, you left on the channel here. I mean, if you guys don't know BBK Dragoon, definitely need to go give him a follow. Link in the pinned comment down below, guys, to his channel. That uploads a lot of great Halo content. So I'm now kind of stretching out a little bit more like Splitgate, Battlefield, and just like other first person shooters out there. This guy is a legend on the first person shooter genre on here on YouTube. If you're not subscribed to him, guys, you're missing out on something. This guy, I guarantee if you like the stuff you see on here, you'll like the stuff on BBK's channel. So go make sure we'll give him a subscribe, guys. And if you guys wanna catch the next Q&A or take part in the next one, all you need to do is just subscribe to the channel, guys. And I'll post it on my community page when I do ask these questions out to see what you guys wanna know more about Halo or other kinds of parts about gaming. But without further ado, let's get right into those details. John Barjas Roca asks, do you think they are leaving the Halo Infinite 10 year plan or they plan on a Halo Infinite 2.0 in the future? I think it's quite interesting, uh, Mr. BBK. I'll let you take the first stab at the question. What do you think there will be a Halo Infinite 2.0? Oh, thank you, man. Okay, so here's... I don't know. I genuinely don't know, <laughs> honestly. Like, I, with 2042, I've seen these comments a lot where people are like, yo, just ditch it, start over, come up with something new. But unless they were to swap to a different engine that's, like, really developer-friendly, like an Unreal-style engine, I don't know if there's a guarantee that, like, scrapping it and starting something new guarantees us progress like we're something better right if it's the same engine we may end up in the same spot again does that make sense like what do you think man i think it's very similar i mean like we do know that they three for three did say they don't plan on doing a halo infinite 2.0 but obviously that was like years ago things change a lot a lot higher ups at my at 343 have certainly changed around for sure as well uh but i don't really see the need for 2.0 of halo infinite it would be just because like i like how halo infinite plays right now like I said, the only thing they'd really benefit from maybe just like an engine that can work in easier. But like even from the developers I've talked with, they said that Slow Space wasn't really like that hard of an engine to work with. It seems like maybe more of like the engineering t uh, side of things, but like the creation side of things, these things seem to um, be like not too much in the way of uh, you know the creative outlets. I guess you want to call it. <laughs> but and like yeah, I don't think there's really and that's kind of like I like also what they're doing with Infinite being like the live service idea, more just kind of adding to the game rather than like. A whole new experience like three years down the way three years later or something like that because i always felt that like halo always had this issue like after halo 3 it's like okay so how do we like mix up the gameplay where it's still super fun but not just like halo 3.5 you know because mm. I, I still yeah. feel like they kind of perfected like the halo gameplay loop in halo 3. obviously there was like minor changes that could be better like you know spread on the battle rifle or something like that but for the most part pretty good but it's like I think Halo King came in this dilemma during the 2010s of like, well, you can't just like do Halo 3 because people will be mad that it's just Halo 3 like expansion. But again, you can't change it too much because people get mad because it's not like playing like Halo 3 essentially. I think there's only a few people who would know, I guess, if Infinite's going to like do a 2.0 or a full on like overhaul and, and Halo 7.362.5. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. But yeah, I think yeah, for the most part, I think they're going to be sticking with Halo Infinite. I don't I mean there are rumors of like uh, another Halo game in the works, but that's not Infinite or something like that. Kind of rumors of that, but that's just kind of leaks and stuff that's been going on for gosh, like at least a year now at this point. Danny Wayne asks, "Do you think Three for Three has a clear or con and concise plan for the story of Halo Infinite?" Or are we kind of winging the story the whole time? I feel like it's so close to being involved and immersive if they made a few distinct modes like Tatanka or counter to the classic battle royale kind of thing uh, for the most part. But do you think they have kind of like a long-term plan down the road when it comes to, I guess this Halo Infinite in general, is it more just kind of like, you think they're doing like season by season plan or are they going like, in two years we're dropping this in three years this is the plan kind of thing oh man that's another tough one like very speculative in terms of mm -hmm. i have no idea like is he asking about maybe storylines that progress through like multiplayer seasons and and you know the way that warzone can kind of integrate some story into operators or whatnot i think or it's kind of i think like, it's kind of like touching on yeah i kind of been like since like multiplayer things to be kind of like the idea of like kind of carrying on the story they've kind of you know implanted that idea in our mind I was wondering if they think they have like a full on story already written out that they're just going to, you know, continue on with or the kind of just like season by season to see like, oh, this would be a cool thing to do kind of stuff. Yeah, I would think it would be cool because with 
the new season, right? We had the cinematic at the start, and it seems like it's an evolution of the story. So I would imagine they probably have some high level points to to tell. But again, I'm I'm kind of terrible with story. If if people <laughs> watch me, they know I'm like a, a lore idiot. So <laughs> I would guess, right? Like there's probably a general direction they they want to go in. Yeah, you know, there's probably some eventual points they want to hit, like maybe seeing the flood return or have Aatrox be so involved cool. with the story or something like that down the line, like in a year or two or something like having these big story beats and they probably they probably have like this idea of big story beats that they want to hit uh but they're probably like the connecting parts to those stories they probably might have to maybe kind of think about it like on the fly almost uh, in a way on the fly as in like develop it within six months kind of thing or something like that that would be really cool i mean it's pretty common in fps's if you look at apex they're telling a grander story with each season right so mm -hmm. i could definitely see it being the, the trend that's followed Live from my basement asks, what was your first Halo Midnight launch and how hyped were you? Halo 3. Halo yeah. 3 was your first one. Yeah, very, very hyped. And it was a school day the next day, so I actually had to oh, like, yeah. I played, I think from like 3 to 5 a.m. or whatever, <laughs> did school, and then played that evening until like I finished the campaign. And it was, it was pretty incredible. It's funny that Midnight releases like are such a relic of the past these days. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does happen, but I just feel like it's not the same. What, what was your first one? Uh, my first one was Halo 2, that launch. Oh, yeah. Cool guy here, bro. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Actually, I want to know, like, so you see, so it sounds like you got home at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Did, were you able to drive yourself back home or did you have to get a ride? I'm trying to remember. Uh, it, I was with people, so uh -huh. it was not driving. But yes, I could drive at that time. Okay. You, were you driving at Halo 2 era? Uh, I think... Yes, yeah, I think I was, yeah, yeah. So I think that's how we got by just fine with that one. I think we borrowed my mom's car or something like that. But uh, it was Halo 2, the local GameStop, you know, 10 minutes down the street. The cool thing about this one, though, was that it became kind of like a like a high school block party kind of thing, which was kind yes. of fun. Because, like, uh, like, a lot of people from high school that I knew ended up be be getting in line as well, so people were, like, had their trunks open playing their systems, or they were playing touch football in the parking lot, because, like, you know, it's... 11 38 at night in the suburbs like no one's around <laughs> that community stuff was so cool because it legit halo 3 you knew everybody like in your friend group who played you knew the tier list too of where you landed in terms of skill <laughs> again your friend group you know what i mean oh, you yeah, always yeah. knew like who you wanted to team with and who you didn't when it was mm -hmm. like split screen time oh yeah that's one thing too i remember like back then it was like you really kind of gauged how good of a player you are compared to your friends nowadays it's like mm -hmm. compared to some YouTuber who spends eight hours a day playing the same game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the scale was different back then. Yeah, very, very <laughs> different, yeah. Oh, man, but yeah, that was... And I remember, like, one person, like, brought out, like, a laptop and they showed, like, their uh, Halo CE, like, montage that they recorded. And I was just, like, blown away. Like, how did you record that? That was crazy. <laughs> Last early days. Oh, 4, he must have had, like... That's pre hypocrisy. Like a dazzle? Probably like a dazzle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Dazzle, yeah. Now we're grandparents. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, man. I remember I was like so close to buying a dazzle, but I was just like, man, that's like all my cash I have, though. I shouldn't. Yes. But then I'm looking yeah. back, I'm like, eh, I probably should. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> what was your first cap card? Uh, my first capture card was the Hop Hog. Hop Hog oh. HTPPR. Eric, back in, you're back in 2010. Five, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> Yeah, I got that. I treated myself for a birthday gift back in 2010. And I record like, I think my first commentary on the channel was like a Black Ops 1 commentary. I was like, um, this is Domination, Call of Duty, using the AK-474U with like the foregrip and the extended mags. Like, you know, just being like super basic, like commentary back in 2010, because I thought people cared about the <laughs> gameplay back then. <laughs> That's amazing, man. <laughs> oh, man. Good times, good times for sure. Like, what was the first thing you did when you brought Halo 3 home? Did you like play the campaign? Did you jump into multiplayer? Like, or did you just like just listen to the menu music for like the th two hours? <laughs> yeah, I love that option. Uh, campaign. <laughs> I just, I hammered through the campaign so quickly and I had really bad internet growing mm -hmm. up. And so honestly, playing online was something that I could only do really when I went to a friend's house. Once I went to college, then it was like unbelievable to just have high speed internet whenever you wanted it. Yeah. Up until that point, it was just go over to your buddy's house to play for the most part. So, yeah, it was it was campaign. How about yourself? Um, yeah, it definitely was campaign. Uh, no, actually, the first thing we did, actually, I, I played with my brother and we did uh, we jumped in coagulation and did like a one V one. And like we were just like playing around until like, yeah, like three or four o'clock in the morning or something like that. And then we just did like a little like 
1v1 on the, on that map like just over and over because that's just, that's all we did back in combat evolve is we just play combat evolve we just play um blood gold ctf with our friends and that was like the only thing we played <laughs> yes oh that's rad man yeah and then uh the only other halo midnight release i did was halo 3 but that was just kind of like outside of walmart went back home played the campaign that was awesome and like I had such a huge grin on my face that like even my roommate like took a picture of me while I was playing because he was like, "This guy's a freaking nerd." <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have that picture saved. Oh yeah, he just couldn't believe it. I could someone could be so happy to play a video game. <laughs> golden golden days, man. It was and fun. Then the, and then my other one was like Halo Four. I think Halo Four was actually yeah. my last midnight release I ever went to. Isaiah asked, "Hey Kev, well I guess also in this case also Dragoon, <laughs> uh, what weapons do you want to return in?" halo infinite it's a yeah there's a lot of potential here or a lot of different options so do you have anything that comes to mind oh yeah oh yeah mm. i just was talking about this with epos we were playing halo 4 i want the railgun back the railgun is one of my favorite weapons oh, in yeah. halo. it mm -hmm. is such a cool arena weapon that's got risk reward and it needs to have kind of that projectile time that the halo 4 one does to where it's you know not a laser beam but you have to actually kind of take a risk step out there and use it and i think it'd be really cool on btb i don't know how it would play on the small maps with infinite like 4v4 stuff it might be a little too easy but that's mm -hmm. the easiest one i can throw out what about you uh, the railgun's a good choice there yeah especially the halo 4 version because the halo 5 version is definitely a lot easier to use for sure mm -hmm. i yeah. i could never hit anything with like the halo 4 version of the railgun i just I'm, i was just trash with it that's probably because i really didn't really play that much halo 4 multiplayer <laughs> <laughs> Well, what about the flamethrower from CE? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'll pass on that one. <laughs> I try to convince him. <laughs> um, actually, I think I made I think I made a video talking about this too. Like, I, th I mean, I think having like the classic magnum would be cool to come back as well, just for like the me the member berries and stuff like that. Three, I just thought of that would oh. be super sick, and it's not probably in the art for it, but the incineration cannon, the binary rifle, and the beam rifle. Mm, okay, yeah, like incineration cannon. I think just like having the actual like visual effects would look like yes. amazing. I love that. It's, it's so <laughs> fun and satisfying. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's mm. just like the Halo Four version when like you just shoot it and then like it, then it shoots again, basically. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's just like literally a nuke. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the light rifle would probably be really sweet to look at too, but especially since we could use a little bit more on the forerunner side of things when it comes to weaponry. Yeah. What if the bolt shot came back? That would be miserable. <laughs> Oh, the Halo 5 Halo bolt 4. shot. Halo 5 bolt yeah, shot. Okay. Halo 4, you. though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about having pocket shotguns. <laughs> okay, so building off of that question, do you think they're going to add new equipment to Halo Infinite? And if so, like any speculation or ideas, what you think would be totally cool theory crafting here? Oof. That's interesting. I definitely do expect to see more equipment coming back and coming, or not coming back, but coming into the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but what kind of equipment though like is this flare. like yeah. flare <laughs> flare <laughs> i want halo 3 flare back in action <laughs> just make everybody angry you just want that's why you did that follow-up you say i just want to say the flare <laughs> the trip mine could be kind of cool in bt yeah i think actually definitely that would be something really interesting to play around with uh, it definitely would be more effective on these BTB maps since they're much more like lane oriented rather than like open fields like we had in those classic Halo 3 games maps, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yep. You would definitely get a kill with a trip mine for sure. Like, <laughs> probably, there's like a lot of creativity potential there too. Like, throw it onto a, a gun goose or something like that. Mm -hmm. I would like to see something, I'd like to see some like some kind of like something physics based. I think it would just be really fun if they could find some way to do that or like the lifts. What a little grab lift. True, we got a little grab lift right there as well. I do like the bubble shield a little bit more than the, the drop shield. Mm -hmm. So that could be kind of nifty. Oh, I actually kind of like the drop shield a bit more. I always felt like the bubble shield was just kind of like, like any, all if you were like, like play tag with your friends when you were a kid and you're, yeah. and you're like sprinting away from them and you get really tired and you just go time out base you know uh, <laughs> that's how I always it is sort of like we'll just wait till this ends like phantom menace style like qui-gon gets down starts meditating yeah, or whatever <laughs> Dude, it's exactly like that and that's one thing i didn't really like about the bubble shield especially since like also it, like it like activates before you actually can see it as well yeah because as soon as they tap x like bubble shield and it's like yeah but now you just kind of stop the flow of the game where i think like definitely the I like how the drop shield is a little more thoughtful actions to it. 
I do think it should be a little bit more, you know, have a little bit more beef on the shielding when it comes to the whole thing for sure. Yeah, definitely for so and also because like I think social, I think just kind of maybe needs a little bit more, not less of like wackiness to it, but just like it just feels so serious. Think about like if power drain were to come in, you throw the power drain next to your buddy who has the repulsor and he repulsors it up and over onto people. Like there's such cool physics problems that you could have and, and mm. just do if you added to it. So I think equipment is a really untapped area where they could augment the gameplay in a pretty cool way, especially since it's on map pickup. Mm -hmm. It still feels really arena, and I don't think it probably would be egregious. With uh, I mean, is there anything else you kind of want to elaborate on a little bit more? Or? No, I think we covered a lot of it, man. Just thank mm -hmm. you so much for letting me uh, come on and chat, and you're killing it. You're an absolute legend, so... <laughs> Kev is the man. Hey, likewise yourself, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Dragon. I've been watching your stuff for years now at this point. Thank you. Yeah. You know, Thanks, man. I catch it all. The mountain bike videos, the game of it, the non-Halo videos, the Halo videos. The the next step of our collabs are gonna have to be a mountain bike collab. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> there's some good there's some good tra trails around here. There's actually one like this like 10 minutes down from my house, and it's like a full on like bike park like cross country kind of trail thing. And then That's like the dream, dude. And then like 30 minutes north, there's a place called Doofy Hills. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's like a, like a full on like manicured bike park with like jumps and bridges and stuff like that. Yo, the GoPro GoFundMe is in the description below. <laughs> they start showing us the gnar and shredding. <laughs> Baby Baby says, I'm only hitting up the beginner trails. I haven't gotten the intermediate yet. But thinking about it. <laughs> Thank you again, man. I do appreciate uh, getting to talk some Halo with you. Obviously, man, yeah, for sure.